Reddit. Have you ever ruined someone's life? We had an employee whose entire job was to manage this spreadsheet. To help her out, I wrote a massive Excel macro that did her 8 hours of work in 30 seconds. Instead of finding something for her to do, the boss fired her, and I got employee of the month honors and a $750 reward for saving the company money by eliminating her position. Possibly. I just resigned from my position at a non-profit. An hour after I left, my supervisor was fired and escorted out. He'd spent a year doing all sorts of low-grade sexual harassment shit. My male coworkers weren't allowed to talk to me, but only I got in trouble for it. Wildly inappropriate jokes about bending me over and fucking me told to my male coworkers while I was standing right there, constantly being accused of having office affairs with all slash any of my male coworkers. Shit like that. But that wasn't what made me knock on him. I turned in my written two weeks to him, resigning for various polite, bullshit, reasons, because I just didn't want to work there anymore, partly because he was an asshole. Fine. We go the executive director of the non-profit, who is female. My male boss says she is going to yell at me and kick me out that day, so he should go with me into her office. I don't give a fuck, so, fine. He comes with me. She is perfectly wonderful and nice as I resigned to her, and she's like, how long do we have you for? And I, very concerned with being professional, said, two weeks. My boss had full control over if they gave me those two weeks. He could have said, no, I want Hulibat junk gone in three days. They gave him that choice. Instead, he told them, his supervisor, and the executive director, that two weeks would be great. He then told me three days. He then told upper management that I was reneging my two week offer and would only stay for three days. He started telling the whole office shit like, yay, super unprofessional, she only gave three days notice. Upper management is so pissed. And following it up with, what a bitch, am I right? Shit like that. Except that I'm not a fucking moron, so I catch on to what he's doing in a day. I make up my mind to bury this motherfucker. Life makes it even easier for me. His supervisor wants to throw me a party, but she says, you only gave us three days. I can't get anything ready. And I'm like, say what? I gave you two weeks. And we set a private meeting for my last day. I get very calm controlled poised when I'm well and deeply angry. So I wrote out my talking points and made outlines and carefully considered my word choices and made sure to dress extra professional my last day. I told her all the frankly illegal shit he was doing in the department, the stuff he was forging. I told her about how he lied to the staff constantly about where decisions came down from. I told her about how he kept everyone scared and isolated, and we walled blackballed for going above his head. I told her the shitty thing he was doing about my two weeks. And then, when I knew that was more than enough to get him fired, I got into the sexual harassment shit. We go to the executive director. I go through everything again. Male coworkers get called down to be questioned if the things I say are true. They are all true and everyone backs me up. I got two weeks of pay, another month of health benefits, and a lot of satisfaction. He got terminated on the spot. Was it life ruining? Yeah, he just bought a big house and now has a three year gap in his resume and this non-profit is super well connected in town. So maybe, TL. Doctor, if you persist in treating me like I'm stupid and helpless, I will fucking total war your ass when you try to fuck me over. Intentionally, I got the man who drugged and raped me when I was in middle school sent to prison for 12 years and registered as a sex offender. He couldn't get a job when he got paroled, and one day I was out shopping and passed by a homeless man who yelled obscenities at me. It was him. He was jailed again, later, for stealing a slice of pizza and making his arrest record even longer. I was vindictively satisfied. I caught my boyfriend cheating on me with some girl. Later he sent me pictures of her with her legs spread and another with the most unflattering boob shot. I ended up making a fake email and sent them to everyone including her mother. It was a small town. There was this kid that always got straight A's in HS because he cheated constantly. He got into Stanford because of it. He cheated off of me and we got caught. Teacher thought I was cheating off of him so I flipped. I was on the AB plus line and got people in the class to take my side because every student knew he cheated. 
My teacher then told other teachers so he got caught in every class after that, didn't graduate and obviously didn't go to college. He deserved it, but I feel bad. I once shot a man in the ass, tackled him and then made him sit in a truck on said ass 4 miles over a bumpy road. Then when we got to our destination he was placed in a large cage, and I left, and never saw him again. In fairness though, he had just tried to lure my patrol into an IED, and we didn't have another way to transport him. In high school, I met a girl, and started hanging out with her. She expressed interest in me, and told me the guy she was dating, was controlling and abusive. She broke up with him, and I publicly talked shit about him without actually knowing anything about him. She was the first girl I'd ever been near, and I was crazy about her, and I thought I was just defending her against some asshole. We started dating, right after they broke up. He shot himself in the head less than 2 weeks after that, committing suicide. We dated for a long while after that, but the way she talked about him changed completely, so some of the things I had said about him were most likely untrue. He took his own life, but I'm sure I made things shitty for him leading up to it. Don't know if this counts as ruining but. In the 10th grade my good friend slash neighbor and I brought wine coolers to school. They were leftovers from a bar beak. Myself, her and a good 3 to 5 other people would sneak and drink them throughout the day. During third block I get called down to the office and of course I'm freaking the fuck out. The principal comes in and sits the empty wine cooler on his desk. By that time I'm about to piss my pants. As soon as he opens his mouth I panic and blame everything on my friend. I even wrote statements confirming what I said was true. I also ratted out everyone who drank, even those who took sips. We were all taken to get drug tested, and my parents were furious. Later on, after telling everyone that my friend was the one who ratted them out, not me, everyone stopped talking to my friend. She even got kicked off the soccer team. Soccer was the girl's life. The fucked up part? My friend's mom was so mad slash embarrassed by her actions that she packed up and moved out god knows where without a word to anyone. To this day my old friend won't add me on Facebook or even answer apology messages. I wouldn't say ruined, but I probably did accidentally scull him for life. During an art period in third grade, my friend and I were just laughing nonstop at how funny our pictures were. He stood up to show off his hilariously drawn picture of something I forgot since this was around 20 years ago. I had the brightest idea of holding a pencil upright, and he basically sat down perfectly onto it, and the next thing I knew, he was screaming for his mom and there was a pencil stuck in his butt. Surprising we were still friends, until he moved to another school, but I don't think he ever felt comfortable sitting down anymore. TL. Doctor friend sat down on a pencil that I put upright on his chair and pierced his butthole. I was young, my wife was home pregnant with our first child, and I was out late one evening getting her a drink from Sonic, which was one of her cravings. I should say at the time I was working a full time job and going to school at night, so I was pretty tired. It was after 10pm, and I was waiting on traffic in a median to pull into the fast food place all clear, so I start to go and all of a sudden there was a loud bang, and I black out for a second. It turned out, that a guy on a motorcycle, whipped out of the gas station next to Sonic, and I hit him on my way through. I blacked out B slash C that the airbag went off, and knocked me out for a second. When I came to I was rolling forward through the oncoming lane, and I saw sparks flying, when I looked out my driver's side window as the motorcycle skidded down the road. I put it in park, got out still dazed and fell over. Bunch of people at Sonic ran over to me, and the guy on the motorcycle. Thing is, he had his kid on the back. About 15 to 16 y slash o. Cops got there, and they called life flight. I never saw the guy's motorcycle lights on, and when I saw it going down the road I didn't see lights on. I just didn't see him. I'm pretty sure he didn't have them on. But B slash C it happened so fast, and I was already dead tired I can't be 100% sure. I got the usual breathalyzer, and what not which all came back negative. They both survived, but the kid was some big football star at the high school, and probably would have had some scholarship lined. But B slash C of the accident he had to get some major surgeries and steel rods put in his legs. Nothing ended up happening legally as it was ruled an accident and there was no follow up. Just what I did to make sure they survived, and about the kid. 
I'll never forget the look that kid's grandpa was giving me at the scene of the accident when both his son and grandson were being picked up by life flight and weren't sure if they were going to make it. I don't know about ruin, but certainly change. I've posted this before but here it is. I kissed a girl at a bar one night, we exchanged numbers and that was that. A week later I was at the same bar, and there's this wasted guy acting huffy and his friends were telling him to chill out. Didn't really think about it, until I saw him walking towards me yelling gibberish. He reached out to grab me, and at the same time he walked into bar stool and I raised my arm fairly quickly to keep my distance, and he tumbles to the floor. His friends thought I punched him, they ran over, and apologized and got him out of there. Turns out the girl was his girlfriend and they broke up the day I hooked up with her, but they had since gotten back together. She then ended things after hearing he tried to attack me. So this guy thinks I hooked up with his girl, ultimately ended their relationship, and knocked him out in front of his friends. The dude hates me, I don't even know his name. A friend of mine was tasked by his manager to fire someone on his team. My friend knew that the person to be fired was going through some emotional times and requested that the manager do it himself, but he was made to fire him as he was his manager. The fired guy committed suicide a few days later, and my friend went into serious depression and blamed it on himself. That was 2010. He quit his job soon after, went into seclusion for a few years, smoked a lot of pot, and now he's finally bounced back and is seeming somewhat normal. When I was in high school, I was best friends with this guy who took photographs for the school newspaper. He was kind of lazy, a bit of a slob and a pathological liar, but he was fun to hang out with. That was until I witnessed him shoot a dog with a pellet gun. After that the friendship was off. In a weird sort of way he actually became my hash one enemy. I rode his ass mercilessly for the rest of our time in school, and so did all of my other friends. Overnight, he went from a pretty well liked kid to a complete social outcast all because I saw him shoot this dog and decided that he was a total asshole. I guess I was pretty popular because the change in my attitude caused a ripple effect throughout the entire school. Everyone either avoided him or picked on him ceaselessly after that. Heck, as a prank we'd even leave rotting food in the shrubs at his house all the time that he'd have to dig out or live with the stench. Well, that was almost 30 years ago, and from what I hear he's been unemployed for about 20 of those years, and is now a certified gun nut who still lives at his parents house spending all of his welfare money on collecting a huge arsenal. Maybe he'd have ended up that way anyway, but in a way, I kind of feel responsible for him being such a massive loser. I was one of his best friends, and I turned on him so harshly and so suddenly it had to have hurt his self esteem pretty badly. Did he deserve it? Hell yes. Was it right of me to do? Probably not. One of my former middle school friends probably claims I did. I always hung out at M's house, since she lived like 4 blocks away, and she liked when I helped her watch her 4 younger siblings. I adore children and her mom was always at work slash out. I would sleep over often, because it was middle school and that's what you did. Every once in a while, her mother would come home and act weird slash smelly funny, I was sheltered, and didn't know what drunk was. Whenever this would happen, M would tell me to go home, since her mom was sick. This ritual of her mother coming home drunk occurred more frequently, until I started to worry. Around this time M throws a huge birthday party, and invites just about every 7th grade girl to her house for a sleepover. M's mom was her usual drunk self, and many girls decided to go home. I felt bad for M and stayed with her. While talking to her that night, I found out that her mother was having M drive her car home from the bars when she was too drunk, so she wouldn't get any more doers. M was 13. I was scared for her, so I did what I thought was the right thing and told the guidance counselor at my school. M's living conditions were investigated and it was determined that they were unfit. M and her four siblings were put into foster care. When I saw her three years after the incident, she gave me the you're dead to me look. It broke my heart, and it still does. I hope her life is better, and she'll eventually forgive me. Life is rough. TL. Doctor, my middle school friend was placed in foster care because I cared about her safety. I'm not sure. The kid moved away. The short story is that I was playing blocks with this kid I considered a good friend at Dacre, and he got pissed over something 
and knocked me on the head with a block. Dick move, right? So I grab another block and hit him on the head. It's fuzzy but I don't think he got up right away and I remember being brought into another room until the parents got there to pick him up. I never saw him after that. I assume brain damage or something. A small part of me suspects he may have died, but I was young, and no one's going to tell me, because it was a long ass time ago and even now, it'll affect my psyche.